Well, this is a neat little thing that I discovered. If you look at the two USB ports that the Raspberry Pi Zero has, but if you were to look at it, you would see one side says power, that's the right side, and the left side says USB. So what that tells me is that this right port is for powering the Raspberry Pi, which you can see it is being powered. This, this cable runs off to a USB hub that is attached to a desk lamp that I've talked about in previous videos. But it runs over here to this power in or power. But as you can see to the right here, I also have this battery pack. Before I played around with this, I, I took a quick peek and figured that there was a very good chance that when I plugged this in, the power buses were tied to each other and it would just power off of, it would, it would select which one it was gonna power off of, either the battery or the primary power source. Sure enough, I plugged it in and it worked like that. So if I were to go real quick, we'll just do a quick demonstration. But you can see the one cable running here, kind of runs around here and then it comes into this left one. And then this one runs around and goes into the right one. So if I disconnect it, everything stays on. And if I plug it back in, everything looks good. If I disconnect the RAV power battery pack, as you can see, I just did here, it, it still continues to run. Uh, the only caveat being this RAV power in some battery packs when they turn off. So right now it's still showing 16% and it'll probably shut itself off in, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds. But when it does do that, some of the inputs goes to a low impedance state, which is not great because it, it's short across the pins before you turn it back on again. So if I turn it back on again and I plug it in, then it will be happy and keep on operating. And I will further prove this out with the requisite metering. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually plug this. Uh, I'm going to unplug this, leave the battery plugged in, and I'm going to plug the meter into this spot right here. And we'll see the meter come on and it will show 5.134 volts, no amps, right? Not, nothing flowing. By the way, this is running my <laughs> this is running my air conditioner right now because it is quite warm outside. Today it got up to about 91, 92. So right now as I record this, it's 87 outside. Pretty warm. Anyways, yeah, I was going to I was going to use the other one. I was going to use this guy, but it's not much fun when you don't have, you know, you don't have something on the line. If you just plug this thing in and go like, "Look, the, the green light stays on." Not as fun. Anyways, I digress. So here is the uh, 5.135 volts. And if I plug this in, I expect to see very little current flowing through. Very little. 8.7 milliamps and 45 milliwatts. It's pretty low. I'm going to now disconnect the RAV power pack while it is plugged into here. And there you go. Actually, it's drawing 1.3 watts because there's two relays on. So yeah, there you go. You can see that the full current now is being drawn by the power supply inside my desk lamp. That's the USB hub inside the desk lamp. Go and plug it in. Hopefully I get it plugged in before the power turns off. If not, you will see a bunch of lights come on and it will reset. And I might just demonstrate that just to show what happens. The little bit of a risk that you take. So I take it off there. And you can see slowly, it's just like, it's like I don't really know what it's doing, but it definitely load balances and then it just decides, nope, I'm gonna pull all the power from this pack. Perhaps it's whatever is the lower impedance source. And maybe this is a little bit lower impedance, so it just kind of like drifts over to that. I'm gonna take a look at the schematic in a minute to kind of further discuss that. Because if I keep this plugged in, and let's disconnect this, let's just do the, do the opposite. We'll put the meter on this side. And by the way, you'd know immediately if this thing cut out because the relays would shut off immediately and you'd hear them click off. So plug this in here. Let me turn it so it's horizontal and actually out of view. Slide this up, slide this up. And so we see, again, same about the same, 1.23 watts being drawn. And I'm going 
to unplug this. A little bit more, 1.3, and now I'm gonna plug it back in. Now this is on an extension cable, so yeah, I guess the impedance that it sees here may be higher than what it sees across the, the pack, but once I plug it back in, it stays pretty much the same. Maybe like 5% of the current is being pulled across this. So most of the power comes from here. Now why is this cool? This pack I have been charging up pretty much from solar for the last month. And it takes it about, with the solar setup I have now, that's about 30 watts. And we're getting good sun. This plus three or four other packs, so it's about 400 watt hours total, can charge in about a day to day and a half. Pretty awesome, the way it's set up. So anyways, I've been using this to power the thermostat. So the thermostat is technically like 95%, maybe 90 to 95% solar powered. A pretty neat little feature here, if you're not planning on using this second USB port for peripherals, if you're not using it for any one of those things, you can absolutely use it for a secondary power supply and you can run things off batteries. And this thing operating as a thermostat, which draws about 0.4 watts idle and about 1.2 when it is. And with about 30 or 40% duty cycle, how do I know? Because I'm measuring it now. With that sort of duty cycle, so about a third of the time pulling 1.2 watts and the rest of the time 0.4, that roughly comes out to, what does that come out to? 1.2 Let's do a quick calculation. Let's have some fun with some numbers. I don't have any, I have nothing to write with. Nothing at all. I have Sharpies, another Sharpie. Try for a pen. Nope, highlighter. I got a pen there. There we go. Uh, 1.2. Is it even gonna work? So 1.2 watts by about, that's about six hours a day. And I'll round it up, we'll say eight hours because it's been about thir between 30 and 40% duty cycle. So for one given day, it's about eight hours. And then the rest of the time it spends, that's 16 hours, I can add. So 1.2 times eight is 9.6, so 6.4. In a given day, there are some days when it's way when it's way less, but about 16 watt hours. So 67 by 16 is 4. Point, yeah, about 4.1 days. Let's just take a quick look at the schematic. So up here we have the what looks like they don't actually say what the label the, the silk screen label actually has on it. Power in, yeah, actually, I'm sorry. I said before just power. It's power in, and then the one to the left of it is USB. So they don't say what this one is. But I'm seeing a decoupling capacitor here, and man, I, I hope they put some, is there any transient protection on the any of these lines? I'm wondering if this is just power in. Because it's J1. Is there a J2 somewhere that we can... Is this all one? I have not looked at this. Oh, this is all one. <laughs> Where's the other USB port? That's weird. They don't mark the other USB port? Super weird. This has got to have another page. This cannot be this is the only page. Table of contents, please. And... There's not even a thing here. It says one page. This looks to be like an incomplete schematic. Uh, let's go back over to the raspberrypi.org. Maybe if we look at the zero. All right, oh, here we go. Interesting, they didn't, they didn't include, this is, Bizarre. So now we're looking at a Raspberry Pi Zero, non-wireless. And you can see there's up here, let me get my drawing implement. So we've got power. So here's our 
power in. And then everything flows into this 5 volt rail. So the 5 volt rail goes everywhere. So we come over to this 5 volt rail and we look at it over here now. What's this? Looks like it's our buck converter. I didn't even look at the part, but it's pretty obvious that it's a buck converter with the inductor, series inductors here that are now dro you know, dropping with a feedback providing the 3.3 volt re reference and a 1.8 volt reference. So now this makes sense. We got a five volt rail coming off the USB port. It's going into this buck converter and then providing 3.3 volt rail and the 1.8 volt rail. Come down here and we look at the other USB port. That better be a USB port. I'll be very unhappy if it's not. Yes, it is. It is. And it is saying VBUS. Okay. Where does VBUS come from? Let's look for references of VBUS. VBUS. I hope this is searchable. It is. I only found one on page. What? Okay, so then. Guys. Okay. VBUS. Where does VBUS come from? Is it coming from. You gotta match up the labels. I don't see VBUS anywhere. I'm not gonna go back and look at previous generation Raspberry Pis to further dig into this. Maybe I'll do that later, but not in this video. But this looks to me like it is the five. Oh, that's a little arrow. Let's let's just go like this. There we go. That's more fun. This looks to be the five volt rail. And so if you're supplying five volts in, you're powering at five volts, the USB differential pair here, that doesn't care. And it's the same, same ground. There's no isolation on the ground. So what you're getting is those two, those two are actually tied to each other. This and this. So these two things are connected to each other, basically, electrically connected to each other. So whether you power it off this one or power it off that one. Sorry, I'm pointing with my finger. So you power it off this or you power it off this. It's the same thing. And if one drops out, it's just the inherent resistance that's on the, the PCB between the two of them. And maybe the power in has a little lower impedance because it's closer to all the control electronics that are doing the, to the buck boost power stuff is all right here, power conditioning. Because I can see an inductor there. And is it a smaller inductor for the other one? They both 4.7 micro. Both 4.7 micro. L1, L2. Whoa, hang on, hang on, hang on. We were looking at the Raspberry Pi non-zero wireless. No, okay, here we are with the zero wireless. Same thing. L1, L2, both 4.7 micro. I see an inductor there, but I only see one. Is there nothing on the bottom? Let's say use a chip inductor for the other one because it's a lower voltage. It could be a different package. They don't put any of the package references on. Anyways, this is going this is going on longer than I anticipated. I thought this was gonna be a quick little video, but then we start looking at the schematic and it's like the schematic is kind of unclear. Looking at the Raspberry Pi Zero non-wireless, which is here, we were able to get a pretty good understanding of how we're able to power this and get power on either port and it won't damage anything because they're all feeding despite this being called the VBUS rail I see nothing in this layout that shows that VBUS is somehow referenced some other way we figured out how these are connected in the previous generation Raspberry Pi it's a pretty cool feature and uh, yeah it might be something you want to consider using depending on the project that you're developing and it makes use of having in this particular case because it's not low power enough to really have I mean even with a hundred watt hour battery pack I get about five to six days from this particular application it's nice to have two sources so that if you want to you know plug something in even if you plugged in two batteries and you you know had one cycled on and then you, you knew that when one was running low you'd you know, you'd replace it with another one and go back and forth and you could be on battery all the time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. So uh, yeah, if you like this, do what you do on the YouTube thing and I will see you in the next one. Take care.